This is Age Wise Weekly. I'm Eleanor Shano. Tonight we're going to talk about late life depression. We are going to bring some rare insights into a very common condition. Have you ever been depressed? Of course you have. We've all been blue at one time or another. But when depression begins to interfere with your lifestyle, it's a different story. Now, the biggest problem with depression is lack of knowledge. That according to our first guest this evening. Our first guest knows what he's talking about because he has been there. His name is Dick Spence. Now, Dick Spence is not just an ordinary guy. Dick is a retired Fortune 500 corporate executive, probably the, the last person in the world that you would ever suspect of being depressed. But Dick was depressed. Dick has found some wonderful treatment. And because he feels that the lack of knowledge is, is really so important to discussing this condition, he has agreed to come and share his story with us tonight. Dick, I, I really thank you for that because I, I know in a way it has to be a little painful to, to talk about something that has been a very painful part of your life. Well, it's not really painful. It would have been at the onset of depression but now uh, I learned to talk about it, and I think that the more you talk about it, the better you're going to feel about it. I have to personalize this. Dick is a personal friend of mine. I've known Dick for, for several years. I knew Dick through the, the depression, but I did not know that he was depressed. Now, this is significant because you were functioning. You were energetic. You were bright. You were articulate. You were, you were on top of your game. No one would have ever guessed a couple of years ago that you were suffering from depression. Absolutely. What did it feel like? Well, first off, when you first realize that your, your lifestyle is changing, you don't know why it's changing. Is it just that you're growing older? Uh, has, is, there, is there a physical reason? You don't know why this is. So you try to hide it. And unfortunately, people today think of depression as the first stage of dementia or they think if you're depressed, you're crazy. Well, you're not. What did it feel like? You, I don't know, fall is my favorite time of the year, and I was not looking forward to fall, and I thought, you know, there's something wrong with you. Uh, I lost interest in everything. I didn't even like to cook. Uh, you, you try to get out of situations, particularly situations that are involved with people, particularly large groups of people, and particularly in small areas, large co cocktail parties, uh, this type of thing. You don't have interest. You have many symptoms. You don't sleep. Some people don't eat. Uh, you, you, you have no motives. You can't get motivated, is what I should say, uh, to do the things that you ordinarily do and ordinarily enjoy doing. Well, did this come on gradually, or, or was there some sudden incident maybe that triggered it? No. Some people feel that there should be a death, a serious surgery, something like that, that causes this. In my case, no, I don't think there was. So I it, think so it, it was, it was gradual? Gradual, yes. All right, what did you do? Did, uh, did, you, did you discuss this with your internist? <laughs> I didn't discuss it with my internist until after I got involved with the the study at the University of Pittsburgh in Western Psych. We're going to be talking about that a little later in the okay. program. Okay. But after I was accepted, the first person I told was my internist. And he looked at me and said, I must have 25 patients that should be, being, should be treated for depression, and you're the last one. I went to the, the oncologist that operated on me for a rather, rather serious surgery, and he looked at me and said, you've got to be crazy, jokingly. He, neither one of them had any idea because I was of the, I felt that if I was depressed, I was crazy. I mean, I was having dementia but of some sort. it wasn't the Dick Spence that you knew and loved. No, he, All no, of a sudden you not. woke up and, and this was some strange this, person. This was a different person. However, to try and disguise, you do everything in your power to mask it, to hide it. So even your closest friends, your family, no one suspected that Dick I don't Spence think they was did. depressed. If they did, they didn't say anything about it. Okay. What happened one day? There was one Sunday you were reading the paper. One Sunday evening, I read a, a rather large ad in the Pittsburgh Press which said depression. And there were six different points listed. What were they? Do you remember? Oh, gosh. Low energy, inability to sleep, uh, 
Changes in your, your eating Changes habits. in eating habits. Thoughts of death or suicide. Um, lack of motivation. Okay. And every one of the six points, every one but one hit me right between the eyes. The only one that I did not, I had never contemplated suicide. You think of death and dying, but the other ones hit me right... You sure don't care much about living. No, you don't. You don't look forward to go, getting up or going to bed, either one. Okay, so what did you do? Now, this was inviting you to perhaps participate in a study. To call a number. At 9 o'clock Monday morning, when the ad said the phones will be there, I was on the phone and went on from there and was interviewed for hours, hours, and more hours uh, before they were sure that I was in the stage of depression that they were inter interested in in their study. This is a special study. It is a late-life depression study that uh, is uh, sponsored by the University of Pittsburgh. And we are going to continue uh, our discussion. We are going to have someone from the, a therapist from the uh, study at the University of Pittsburgh join us here in the studio. And our phone lines are open now. If you want to talk to the therapist or to Dick Spence about late-life depression, call us at 622-1555, and we'll be right back. the young vet who set up practice in the Yorkshire Dales of the 1930s. Gradually, James Herriot won the trust of local folk, and for 20 years, he, his family and friends shared in the joy and heartaches of caring for the wonderful creatures that became a part of their world. Rarely has a series captivated viewers and critics with its warmth, humor, and simple beauty, and now it returns. All creatures, great and small, coming home in September to WQEX. You've always wanted to trek the lush green meadows and forbidding mountains of Switzerland, but those cheap airfares just aren't cheap enough. Well, WQEX offers you free passage on the Glacier Express, a railway that winds through alpine villages and across 291 bridges. Pittsburghers will like that. It's a scenic adventure spanning the length of southern Switzerland. The Glacier Express, Friday night at 9 on WQEX 16. Weekly. I'm Eleanor Shano, and tonight it's a very special program. We're talking about late life depression. We've been talking to Dick Spence, and Dick has gone through a serious bout with depression. He has not only survived it, but he's here to tell his story in a very positive way. And joining us now in the studio is Lynn Aaron Price. Lynn is uh, Dick's therapist, and you are involved in this study. First, Lynn, tell us about this, this very special study. Well, we received a large grant from the National Institute of Mental Health to look at depression in what we call late life. It's actually for people 60 and older. We think of 60 as young, <laughs> old, you know, these days it's really not old. But at any rate, that's how it's defined. So we're looking at folks who are 60 years old and older who have had at least one other episode of depression in their life. Now they're depressed again. We actually interview Mr. Spence was saying how many hours we talked to him. We interview probably 15 or 20 people for every one person who fits the, program, the protocol that we're looking for. What we want to do is we want to treat that person and get them well, and we have over an 85% success rate, which is just wonderful. Is depression a normal part of aging? Do we become depressed as we grow older, just as we look at the, the, you know, the little life clock and say we're down to a couple of minutes? Absolutely not. It is not a normal part of growing older. In fact, the wide majority of older people do quite well. They're survivors. You know, if you get to be 60, 70 years old, you've been through a lot, and most older people do, do not get depressed. So it is not a normal part of growing older. Lynn, what are the symptoms of, of late-life depression? Well, the symptoms, um, as Mr. Spence said, are changes in sleep. That's a, a major one. Generally, people uh, report that they're not sleeping as they used to sleep. Even though normal aging, you will sleep less than you did, let's say, 10 years ago. You might need less sleep. But I'm talking about serious um, symptoms, for example, taking longer than an hour to fall asleep, getting up in the middle of the night, not being able to get back to sleep, getting up earlier in the morning than you need to. 
or the flip side of that would be sleeping all the time mm -hmm. okay changes in appetite generally people who are depressed just don't want to eat they lose weight they become dehydrated malnourished you said you have a woman who said that her food all tastes like wood right that's an example of a depressed person talking my food tastes like wood and they lose weight without trying to and they often can become dehydrated malnourished and then they get confused and one thing leads to another that's why it's really serious this is a life-threatening illness right. then right but the encouraging thing is that it is treatable at, at, at any age we have a caller on line five go ahead you're on the air Yes, um, I was wondering if there was a relationship between depression and financial stress because I'm experiencing some of those symptoms, but I don't feel depressed. However, you know, my, my situation is uh, I'm financially, I'm looking towards retirement and uh, I really don't feel comfortable with that. Looking forward to retirement, a little financial stress, has the symptoms but doesn't feel depressed. This person should be evaluated if they have the symptoms, okay? Um, generally, depression tends to come back for people so that if you're a person who, who's had depression before, let's say after birth of a child, people get depressed, then maybe later on in life. Uh, life stressors can trigger a depression, but as Mr. Spence said, they, it doesn't always have to happen. Sometimes people will be through the same kind of tragic event, even like the Holocaust, let's say. Some people got depressed and committed suicide there. Some people didn't get depressed. So sometimes life events can trigger it, and sometimes it comes on for no known reason at all. Now, this caller is saying that he is having financial stress, and that can trigger a depression. And if you think that it, you might have it, it's worth it to get evaluated. But isn't that... Isn't that something that we're all used to. Isn't that just worrying about something? And isn't that different than being depressed? Well, no. And yes, it is. But before we, before I forget it, uh, caller, one thing, retirement is fantastic. You'd be amazed how much less expensive it is to exist and have a good time when you're retired and ask the man who's enjoying it tremendously. Hey, now maybe, so, you just, maybe you just solved that, that gentleman's problem. Maybe he doesn't have the financial worries he thinks he has because it's going to cost less plus, for him to live. Plus the fact, if you are retired or are going to retire, that doesn't mean you have to stop working. One, when I retired, I did more volunteer work. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And you can go to work doing something else, work in a gas station, something like that. I mean, when, when Dick Spence first came, came in and he was interviewed to, to become part of the study, how did you know that he was a candidate for the study? How did you know that he was truly depressed and not just somebody who was, you know, maybe in a down period in his life? That's a good question. We have what we call small D depression and capital D depression. A small D depression would be just, you know, having a bad day or a couple of bad days. Maybe something bad happened or maybe some, you're just feeling down. In order to qualify for really having what we call capital D depression, you have to have four or five of the symptoms that we've been talking about. They have to last at least two weeks. For Mr. Spence, they had lasted three and a half months before we saw him, okay? And they have to interfere with your functioning. And even though you saw him out, he is unusual. He can put on a face and a mask and go out and socialize. A lot of people couldn't a do that. A lot of people stay home from work. They cannot function they they miss important events weddings and things like that they just can't I function. i think it's important Lynn, for for our viewers to to have you run down the other list you you, you uh, said that a change in sleep patterns change in eat, loss of appetite right what are sometimes what overeating what also can be the flip side of that then it's decreased motivation decreased ability to enjoy things to concentrate to, absolutely decreased concentration not being able to make decisions for example what to put on if you're not even going out for that day what to make for dinner you go to the supermarket and you can't even figure out to buy one thing or the other and for older people often symptoms are uh, more aches and pains than usual I had one gentleman who had been to 19 doctors for headaches they couldn't find out why he had headaches we treated his depression the headaches have disappeared well, we, we really need on this program tonight to talk about the, the positive part of this and the fact that it is treatable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you are living proof. Uh, I think we ought to bring out, too, the fact that I am no longer in depression. I'm in a study, but I've been out of depression now for over a year, oh, isn't it? Absolutely. Right. And I don't even know right now whether I'm taking the medication that was I was taking initially or whether I'm taking a placebo. And I won't know for another... 
probably two years. Two more. years more. I'll be in this the same study. That, that's part of part of the study. It's a double blind study, and uh, the, the the members of this study group are taking medication. Right. We have two parts. First is to get people well, and to get people well, they get two treatments. They get talk therapy, and they get medication. Everybody gets that, and we're getting 85% well. At that point, if you were being seen in the community, you would stop. You, you know, I'm well, and I would say, good luck, call me if you need me. But we want to follow them for three years after that, and half the people will remain on the medicine, and half the people will be on placebo, because we want to see how to keep this dreadful illness from coming back. But, I mean, let's clear up uh, any confusion that there might be. Even though we are here talking about a specific, uh, specific study at the University of Pittsburgh, you will be able to offer help to other people who may not Absolutely. qualify for that study. And if people, people who don't want to take medication, for example. Right. And if people come in and they don't meet the criteria because of one thing or another, let's say they have active cancer or um, other medical conditions that wouldn't allow them to take the medicine, or if they don't want to take medicine, we will refer them to pro appropriate sources. There's lots of people that can treat depression. Just remember, our phone lines are open. You can talk to, uh, to Lynn or to Dick by dialing 622-1555. We are talking about late life depression on AgeWise Weekly. We'll be right back. Folks, here's a short preview of this week's Lawrence Walk Show. Some wonderful songs saluting the Walt Disney 50th anniversary. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. If you say it loud enough, the sun is shining. Oh, happy day. No more trouble. No Underwritten on WQEX by Canterbury Place. QEX shows you how to vent your hostility, get your hands dirty, and keep you in stitches. Learn how to from the people with the know-how. Wise Weekly. I'm Eleanor Shano, and this is Dick Spence and Lynn Aaron Price. Lynn Aaron Price is a therapist at Western Psych, and Dick has agreed to talk about his bout with serious clinical depression. He's all over it now. He's healthy, and I want to commend you for coming on a television program and talking about depression. You well, know, a lot of people would think, gee, there's a stigma attached to that. I'm not going to let the world know that I was depressed. Well, I didn't want to at first, and I, I tried to, to hide it. However, uh, one of the first things in this study that I learned was what is depression? I found out that you're not crazy if you're depressed. And they also teach you to talk about it. And if you were talking to your friends, any of your friends, I'll bet you any, every single one of them would know one person that is depressed and they don't even know it. Now, there are, there are dozens of articles that are published of course, we don't have newspapers now, but a lot of good articles about depression. Read them. Read, find out as much as you can about depression, because I will guarantee you that everybody that you know at one time or another is going to have a relative, a friend, a, a, an uncle or something that is in one or another stage of depression. So find out about it. Lynn, when, when you were talking about the symptoms uh, of depression, you can see how older people would be, uh, would be concerned. They would think that these were just normal uh, symptoms of, of aging. I'm confused. I can't balance my checkbook <laughs> anymore. Uh, I, I just can't make decisions at the supermarket like I used to. So I think it's very important that, that, we, that, that we again reemphasize that this can be a symptom of a very serious life-threatening condition. Right. A lot of people think losing interest in things is normal. It's not normal yeah. as you grow older. I've had several patients whose family members have said to me, Mom, when you stop going to church, that's when I know you're depressed because you enjoy church. Mm -hmm. And some people will say, well, she's older, she's tired. That isn't how it should be. You don't lose interest unless there's a reason for that. What causes depression? Well, there are several theories about what causes depression. Um, many people think it's a chemical imbalance, therefore drugs are useful and work. And a lot of people think that it's life changes and things that go on in one's interpersonal life and therefore therapy will work. 
In our study, we're using both medicine and therapy because we want to give people the benefit of the doubt and use two treatments. So in our therapy, we actually try to focus in on interpersonal relationships, looking to see if there's been a recent loss, for example, a recent role transition, for example, retirement. Now, Mr. Spence is doing really well with retirement. Some people do well and some people don't. It's a life change. Even getting married, for example, is a life change, even though it, it often and should be a positive one. It's a life transition. Leaving home for a younger person, for example, would be a role transition. Dick, you had a very high-powered position. As I said, uh, you know, a big corporate executive with a Fortune 500 company. How did you have made, made a, a, a big impact in your life when you stepped out of that ivory tower? At first it did, but I, I loved it. You know, I... I I mean, you walked in every morning and people said, good morning, Mr. Spence, good yes, morning, Mr. Yes. Spence. All of a sudden, you go out, walk into your kitchen, and there's nobody there <laughs> bowing down. But, uh, you know, getting you back to... You make your own coffee. Absolutely. It's, it's better, too. I mean, <laughs> uh, getting back to what you were talking to Lynn about, every case of depression is totally different. You cannot generalize with these people. Uh, I think maybe I was less of a problem because I was not going to let this get me down. And when I, when I found out that there was something wrong, I made up my mind I was going to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Are there different types of depression? Well, I wanted to respond to what you said. There are similarities so that we can definitely, we know how to identify depression. There's no question about that. So if people are wondering if they're depressed or not, they should get evaluated. It's free and they can come in and it doesn't hurt. It might take two hours but we don't hurt you and we can help you understand whether you have the illness or not. Um, and depression, there are similarities about it, but every situation is different. I have a caller on line seven. Go ahead, you're on the air. Line seven? I think we were having some problems with line seven before. It's not call coming through, so maybe caller on line seven, if you'll hang up and call in on another line, we're having some technical difficulties tonight with our phone line, so if you have a question, I think you still have time to dial in on another line. Uh, the study is free, not the study is not, well, the study is free, but the evaluation is free. Now, do you have a phone number that people can call? Right, people can call 624-1000. That's easy to remember, 624-1000. The main number at Western Psych, and tell them that you're interested in being evaluated for depression and you're 60 or older. Mm -hmm. We'd be glad to see you. Usually we can see you within a week. That's the only criteria, you have to be 60 or older. Well, they, will, they, will do, they will do an evaluation under 60. Of course, but for our program. Okay, For All our right. program. And I think that's a good point, too, is that depression can hit people at any age. We even have children who are depressed at the, at the Institute and who are getting treated. You told me a story before the program tonight about you're treating now a, a woman near 90, and mm -hmm. you've had very positive results. Right. She happens to be in my private practice, but she's 89 years old. She has a master's degree. I mean, she's quite an unusual, wonderful woman, and uh, she's getting well. She was severely depressed, and she had some life circumstances. Her husband had Alzheimer's disease and actually died during the time that I knew her, uh, but she is getting well, uh, actually mostly with psychotherapy. Really? Uh, Lynn, you know, that, that's, I think that's um, saying a lot for that woman because when you're 89, you have lived through a time of, of life. You've grown up in a time where, where you just felt that this kind of help was not necessary. You could fight your own battles. You could solve your own problems. It's only in recent years, I think, that we, we have understood the importance of, of reaching out and, and getting professional help. Well, in truth, it's her granddaughter that twisted her arm to come in, but she, she enjoys coming now that she's started. You have had some, some, some wonderful stories. I think tonight we need to, uh, to again, reemphasize that this is a life-threatening condition. Caller, line five, you're on the air. Oh, thank you. I'm a, a woman of 80, soon to be 81. I just wondered if there was any hope for me. I've been through this four times. This is the fifth time. I've been hospitalized four times, and it started when I was 38, but I didn't know what it was. And then it would go into remission for 14 or 15 years and would hit me again out of a clear blue sky. I can't pinpoint anything. Right now I'm doctoring and I'm on doxepin and Xanax. But it's a year that I just am not doing any good at all. Is there any help for an old lady like me? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
we'd love it for you to come in to our program. You have to be able to come into Oakland. That's another thing. You have to be able to get to Oakland and come in once a week. But if you came in, we would evaluate you and see if we could help you through our program. We'd very much like to talk to you. We're taking people over the age of 60. You could be 90, and we would be interested in talking with you. The number is 624-1000. Now, if I could remember that number just ha hearing it once, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can remember, but jot it down. 624-1000. If, if someone in your family is depressed, it really is worth the time and effort to make that phone call. As you said, the, the evaluation is free and it can change your life. How important is the, the support of family members? Well, I'll tell you, when you think about families, the families suffer as much as the patient does and what we do in the, in the program is we try to offer both education and support to the families we have a family meeting on a sunday invite significant others anyone that the patient wants to invite is welcome to come so that we can provide them with information oftentimes families think that patients are doing this on purpose or that they're manipulative or that if they just pull themselves out of it and we we have them understand that they can't well we're running out of time. I only have enough time now. Dick, you want to make one quick point? One quick point. The sooner this caller calls, the better off she's going to be. Dick, thank you so much. Dick Spence. My pleasure. Joining us. And Lynn Aaron Price, thank you again for being here. We hope that uh, we have uh, shared some very valuable knowledge with you tonight. We'll be back next Wednesday at 8. And next week, we're going to come back with some tricks on de-aging your skin. So join us Wednesday at 8. I'm Ellen Shano. Have a good evening. jury has ruled that two Pittsburgh police officers acted justifiably in the fatal shooting of a man in Northview Heights three weeks ago. The officers testified they shot 38-year-old Rodney Webster when he pointed a gun at them. The Port Authority has accused the union representing bus and trolley drivers of failing to bargain in good faith. Pat made the claim in an unfair labor practice charge filed with the State Labor Relations Board. And the local office of the American Red Cross is seeking financial donations to assist victims of Hurricane Andrew. The office also will set up a phone bank to help local residents reach relatives in the storm zone. For more news and features, call the free PG phone news at 263-1748.